So you're given another question. You got some carbon monoxide, and that's gas, and you're going to react it with H2 gas, and just like in the previous question where we combusted methanol, well, this is going to form methanol, okay? And it's at 25 degrees Celsius. So you're going, hey, that's great. What's the question? Find the delta G. Hey, no problem. I'm going to use that formula, delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. And that's great. Okay, but here's the problem. It's not in, even though it's in standard temperature, the pressures of these two gases in the reaction, no pressure for that liquid, they're not standard at one atmosphere. So therefore, calculating from the tables using delta G's and delta H's and delta S's of formation, you can't utilize because those are all under standard conditions. And this isn't. So what are you going to do? Well, you actually have to do this calculation and be given some other type of information. To find the delta G, not the delta G naught, because it's not under standard conditions, this is what you employ. The delta G for this reaction actually equals the delta G naught. Whatever the delta G naught is here still has validity. You can calculate it from products minus reactants, but then you have to add a correction to it. And the correction is this. Now, I'm not going to go through the derivation of this. You can, you know, by the way. It's just that it's just too much. RT times the natural log of Q. Well, I didn't have to write in brackets there. I could just wrote Q. What's Q? This is the cool thing. You know how we're kind of incorporating other units of study in here, right? We've got, we've got thermodyna thermodynamics is incorporating like thermochemistry and, and an understanding of that. And like products minus reactants, right? That's Hess's law of additivity shortcut. Well, Q is the equilibrium expression. So the equilibrium expression for this reaction gets written in here, whether the, the, the numbers are in concentration or in this case, pressures, right? Most specifically pressures for this. So now look. When we employ this correction onto the delta G naught, we can calculate the delta G for this reaction. Watch how this works. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate this delta G, and it equals whatever the delta G naught is for this reaction. And by the way, when you calculate it, it's negative 29 kilojoules per mole. Now, when you calculate it off the chart, it's going to be because they give the delta G values in joules. I just turned it into kilojoules right here, okay? And it's plus... R, which is 8.314 joules per Kelvin mole. That's the R value that you need to use. Your data booklet or your data sheet that you're going to be given for an exam is going to have two values for R, maybe even three, right? They're going to have the universal gas constant numbers, but whenever you're using energy in a calculation, you need to use the joules per Kelvin mole, 8.314. Times what? Times the temperature, 298K. Hey, it's 25 degrees Celsius. Yeah, plus 273 because it has to be in Kelvins, right? and then times the natural log of the equilibrium expression, which is, now look, what is the expression here? Well, since this is a liquid, it doesn't get written in the expression, right? Yeah. So these are two gases. So it's the pressure of the CO times the, pre the pressure of the H2, but it's squared. By the way, that CO right there is 5 times 3 squared is 9, 9 times 5 is 45. So it's the natural log of 1 over 45. Did you like that? That's pretty cool. Now, now watch. When you do all of this math right here, the delta G equals negative 39 kilojoules per mole. Why is that really cool to know? First of all, when we change the pressures we actually can do a recalculation to solve for the delta G and we find that the reaction goes from a delta G naught value of negative 29 in standard conditions. When we change it to these pressures, we get negative 39. So now, some scientists will say, some people will say, some teachers will say, some professors will say, you know what that means? That this reaction is more spontaneous. Well, yeah, I guess it is. That, that, that's, a, that's a way of, that we say it. We say that's more spontaneous. The reaction is spontaneous anyway, it's just that when we change its condition, it just releases more free energy to do useful work. That's the better way of saying it, I think. Um, so the thing is, it, yes, it's more spontaneous, and why does that make sense? Oh, because. Think about it in terms of Le Chatelier's principle, eh? If we increase the pressures here, and by the way, when we increase the pressure of a system, which way does the reaction shift? 
the reaction shifts to the side where there are less moles of gas. Three moles of gas, no moles of gas on the side because that's a liquid, so it shifts to the right. We increase the pressures, it shifted to the right. Shifting to the right means you're shifting to the direction of spontaneity. So the spontaneity goes up. Ah, oh, that's fantastic. Well, I think it is anyway.